Hello YouTube, welcome to the fake Merc character study part 17. Now, it's only been a month after part 16, but I know that you guys are still in shock from the revelations. And so I was almost considering taking it easy today and, you know, just doing a small episode, nothing major. But every single time I tried that and I tried to just, you know, help you with your actual mental addiction and to slow down a tad bit, I stumble across something that blows my mind that has never been discovered about Jason and I'm forced again to make an episode just destroying him entirely. So once again, part 17 is going to be a banger. I apologize. I know that you, you need some rest to recover from all of these ments, but the ment train has no brakes. So you're in for a ride today. So to go back on part 16, Probably the episode that had the biggest impact on Jason. I have never seen him go that crazy with the suck accounts. And that's saying a lot because he's been spamming my videos with his suck accounts for the past year. But this time he went all out. Created something like 15 female suck accounts, most, most of which were actually banned by YouTube because they recognized that they were bots. And he also has continued to post under the character studies with different suck accounts because I think that this was the killer blow. I knew it was going to have an impact, but I didn't realize how strongly it would impact his life. Because three days before the video, he was on his channel telling his subscribers that he was bigger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. I am not making this up. This man that looks like a lumpy potato was telling people that he was bigger than one of the greatest bodybuilders of all times. And he even went into detail. He told people that he had a bigger chest and triceps than Arnold. And this is a level of delusion that I thought even he was not capable of. Like this is, this is psycho stuff. How does he look at himself and truly believe that he's bigger than that? It's getting to the point where I firmly believe that we're seeing the last of him. He's devolving so quickly and you can tell that his health is degrading so fast that it might be the end for our favorite lol cow. We might have one year left of his shenanigans before he just crashes. But the interesting thing that really made me realize that it truly crushed his spirit all of these revelations about his flirting with the ladies is the fact that, again, three days before he was all chirpy on his channel once again with his scope of being big and massive and the monster and then the second part 16 dropped, cricket. He almost went completely black on social media. He's barely been posting. The few posts I could see of him on Facebook, for example, were very humble and very, you know, toned down for some reason. Uh, I even got someone send me a screenshot that I got before of him admitting that he knew nothing about powerlifting. A screenshot that clearly shows him telling someone else that, He's been lifting for 20 years and he barely is grasping the fundamentals. One, yes, we know Jason because you look like shit and you're weak. You don't have to tell people. Anyone with eyes can tell that. But two, it's the first time that I've actually seen him admit that he knows nothing and that is completely unconsequential. And that is, in my opinion, progress, but not in the direction you think. Because with vulnerable narcissists, two things can happen. When they finally recognize that they have a problem or that they're not as perfect as they try to pretend, it either means that they're getting better, so they're actively in recovery mode, or that it's like leur chant du signe. It's their last hurrah before they just commit the, the final act of, of giving up, of abandonment. I don't know if it's going to happen. If it does, the worst thing, if, I think, if, if, that if he's actually going through with that and he takes his life, the first people that will know is us. And that really is showing how sad and pathetic his life is. If he actually kills himself, we will be the only people to know. Maybe his neighbors after a while because of the stench coming from his apartment, but that's pretty much that. So in a sense, we're his last remaining family. And that is the remnants of what he has in his life. So in a sense, this character study also serves as the last contact he has with humans. Because a big problem for him with part 16 was that it made it impossible for him to post on the Facebook uh, strength page that I described, the powerlifting page, because now he knows that I have access to all of his posts, so he's barely been posting at all. 
And even more pernicious than that, he, as I said, was using that as a hunting ground for women, but now he can't really do that anymore, can he? Because every single time he get it, it gets in contact with a lady, he has no way to know if they're real or not, because it could just be a catfish. And I know that Part 16 inspired all of you guys, and that all of you have actually contacted me and started catfishing him as well on that page. So it's a situation where the last space he had to be social with people has been taken away. And that is something that I've told you in the past, Jason. Every single area that you have, where you think you're safe, I'm going to find them and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Until you apologize, it's very easy to do. But until that point, you are going to live in constant fear that the person you're talking to is either feeding me information or just someone pretending to be someone else. And the funniest thing is that even if a miracle happened and some woman who has a, a learning disability started chatting with him, like being real and genuine on Facebook, trying to get to know him, he would be so paranoid that he would most likely block her because he would think that it's, a, it's an actual catfish. And it's like a living hell for him because this means that the last actual contact and accessibility he had to women is completely gone. I mean, at this point, I guess he could try and visit the closest nursing home look for patients with dementia and hope that they are deep enough in the hole that they are going to go out with you. At this point, it's your last option, Jason. And in a sense, those old ladies, they look like you a ton. They tend to be overweight. They don't have much hair left. They have no teeth. It, it, it's a good match, right? It's actually someone that you can have a sustainable relationship with. Plus, if they have no memory left, well, you can just laugh and continuously lie to them. They don't even remember your name. So it doesn't change anything. I'm giving you some, uh, some tips here for your love life, because it's the last thing you have left. So that was for part 16. What else can, can I add from part 16? Uh, I'm adding in the pinned comment the uh, full script of the Facebook comments. I'm not going to add the catfish because it's literal pages and pages and pages. But if you guys really want me to, I can just type them down for next time. Uh, it's not as interesting. It's the reason why last time I just took the summary of it and the best moments. Because it's just Jason for like 40 minutes trying to get some girl on Facebook. And it's really painful to go through. It's not that funny. But again, if you want that, I can make excerpts. It's not a problem for me. So that was for the small summary of part 16. I think I didn't uh, actually forget anything. And as I told you today, we're going to get into a completely different topic. We're going to push aside the topic of women that, that has been dealt with. We're going to talk about athleticism today and sports in general because... If there are two things that Jason would like you to know and think, it's one, that he gets all of the girls, and two, that he's a strength athlete. And that is his, in a sense, selling point and what he's always been using on this page to explain why he looks like shit and why you should listen to him. Because according to him, again, he's an athlete. So we're going to see today if that's true. But actually, as I told you, when I was researching for this video, I dug up a fact when I was trying to see if he actually had any level of sport career or anything relevant, I really went deep. Like I was like, did he play soccer when he was in, in middle school? Anything I could find to actually tie him down to the world of athletics. And I stumbled across something that blew my mind, something that no one had ever actually found and I had never read anywhere. But I'm going to wait a bit to share it with you. Because for the start, I want to open with the fact that he has absolutely no pain tolerance. And for someone who's an athlete, that's a big problem because a lot of the time, do sports take a lot of cardiovascular endurance? And if you cannot take that, and if you just give up the second your heart beats a bit too fast, well, then you're not an athlete. It's not possible. And this is something that you could see, especially on his uh, chin-up videos. And on his curls videos as well. I think the chin up is going to speak to the biggest amount of people because I think you remember the video I'm talking about. It's a video where he has a plastic chain from straight from Walmart around his neck that must weigh one pound tops. And you can tell it's plastic too because it makes no noise. There's no clinking noise. And it moves like paper. It moves like paper in the wind. It truly shows that he is so stupid that when he makes videos trying to fool people, he doesn't even bother trying to come up with something inventive or cunning. He's just doing the first random shit that goes through his head to look badass, and he thinks it's just going to go. And in a sense, it does work, because 
to go back on the topic of fake weights, uh, fake weights, sorry, I actually found a video from years back of him doing front squat in a public gym, and at some point he claims a three plates front squat, and on the bar you can see him, he stacked two actual 45s, and then a five pound plate, but you know it's those bumpers, so it's just as big, and he just thought that it was going to fly, like no one was going to notice that this was a big ass crossfit plate. And it's, again, a proof that he's been using fake plates forever, because that, to me, constitutes that. When you lie about the amount of weight that a plate is, that is fake weights. But for the chain thing, yeah, it was plastic. So it was him doing bodyweight chin-ups, okay? And he could, I think he could barely get six or seven with shitty range of motion on top of that. And he looks, like the look on his face, it looks like a dog is munching on his genitals. It's tough to explain if you haven't seen the video, but within two reps, he's, he's already like this, like, like in deep pain from chin-ups. Like chin-ups, the exercise where you barely feel anything. I mean, if you are in that level of suffering from chin-ups, maybe get yourself checked because that's not normal. Maybe on squats and deadlifts, because these are actually tough lifts, but on chin-ups, plus with just body weight, no actual added weight. How is that possible? Well... It's possible because he has the pain tolerance of a three-year-old girl. And that has been proven across the board because, if you remember, when he actually tore his bicep, uh, when he actually had to get bandaged, I remember him, and I don't, again, understand why he would share that, he told people that for the nurse to remove the bandage around his arm, he had to take painkiller. You know why? Because when you remove the bandaid, it tears your hair, but it's, it's nothing, you know, it's the type of stuff that seven-year-olds complain about, but they tear it and they're done with it. He asked for actual painkillers to be able to go through with that. That's how much of a little bitch he actually is. And this doesn't correlate with being an athlete at all. But it does work on one actual plane. It does, in a sense, make what you are doing look badass to the initiated, like, if maybe if you look like you're suffering from chin-ups, people are going to buy that you're actually working really hard. But that also shows that he is, in a sense, correct when he says that he has barely grasped the fundamentals in 20 years because he's constantly trying to pander to novices and people who don't know any better. And that impossibility to actually do anything painful explains also why he never does high reps. Every time he does high reps on his training, it's for like a period of two weeks. Then he gives up. And he, his explanation is that it's junk volume. No, it's not junk volume. A set of eight on, I don't know, a snatch grip deadlift is not junk volume. It's just that it's very painful, right? So you don't want to do it because you would rather do just one rep maxes that are, yes, difficult in terms of actual getting the weight up. But in terms of cardiovascular endurance and muscle pain, it's nothing. It's one and done. And it's also for the people who continuously ask why he looks like shit. It's the reason. When you continuously refuse to do volume and to actually feed your muscles, well, then nothing happens. Your strength can go up. In this case, it didn't even work. But the muscles, you're going to eventually run into problems. So anything hard, he avoids completely. Which is why, when he started to claim to do very intense GPP, I got curious. Because GPP is very demanding on the heart and the lungs. So I was thinking to myself, hmm, what can this fat lump of a man actually do? in terms of GPP, because keep in mind that in the past, what he thought constituted high intensity cardio was to set up a little like bike, pedaling bike on the floor, and he would slowly pedal as he played video games. And in his head, that was good cardio, which absolutely does nothing, of course. So I didn't even have to dig on this one because he gives off information by himself. He claimed that for his GPP, he would do sled drags. So for the people who don't know, a sled is just something you put on the floor. It has like skis underneath and you put plates and you drag it. And you can drag it like this when you go backwards or you can push it. You can do a ton of things with sleds. It's a great tool. But can you try and picture Jason actually doing that? He barely can walk. How on earth would this guy actually push something like this? He's the least manual person I've ever seen in my life. It's the reason why he lost his job when he was working on, uh, I think it was compressors. He had a very easy job of just swiping the floor and moving stuff around. And he couldn't even manage to do that because he's just incapable of using his body. He's incompetent to that level. 
So it would have been interesting to see footage of that, right? Because that's what we want to see. We want to see Jason actually be athletic. And yet, there has never been any footage of him doing sled drags. It's never happened. And his excuse and his big cope is that he does them outside of his house at 4 a.m. And therefore, he can't record because it would be a hassle to take the camera out and to set it up. He even said it could be stolen. I thought you lived in a good neighborhood, Jason. I thought you were rich and you had a mansion somewhere in Colorado for your uh, cheerleaders that you fuck on the side. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I can take my, my phone that's recording right now. I can plug it in front of my house. I can just go to bed. I'll wake up. The phone is still there. That's called living in a good neighborhood. And he said that it would never happen. So he lives in such a shitty ghetto that at 4 a.m. in the morning, if he left his camera like 10 feet away from him, someone would just pop outside like from behind a dumpster, a crackhead, and then run away with it. Yeah, that, that seems to be like a very good neighborhood you're living in, Jason. So that was his big, big excuse as to why. And on top of that, what ended up happening too is that, of course, people were curious, some of which were genuine, some of which were actual troll, like myself. And the big question was, okay, well then, why don't you just do it a different time? Or why don't you try and find a different way to record? You have many friends, Jason. Why don't you have some of your friends record you? They would love to see you lumbering around shirtless in your back alley, correct? Well, he immediately flipped the script and said that he had given up on slag drags because he was bothering his neighborhood. So, in a sense, that is acceptable because if my neighbor started to actually pull a sled at 4 a.m., I would have some choice words for him. But in this case, it takes a very quick Google map search to find out that where he lives, this is his apartment building. Right there is an industrial zone. It's, it's corporations pretty much. And that corporation opens its doors at 8 a.m. And the alley because that idiot, of course, took pictures, not realizing that it's very easy to pinpoint where he lives, if I can see outside your window, that alley is actually far removed from the building. So he could do slag drags all day long here. At 4 a.m., it wouldn't bother anyone. There's no one in the buildings. And on top of that, I checked, this alley is not used for trucks. So there's no trucks that are unloading anything. So that excuse is, of course, bunk. But what I did find, because I contacted the person who owns the company, is that the pavement that is actually the, the place where he did his sled drags are extremely fragile because it's not like concrete, it's actual rocks that are put in there. And the thing that I found too is that they got damaged. So I, I, I surmise, I have no factual proof, but I believe that what happened is Jason did that once, most likely at like 4 p.m. or something, never at 4 a.m. He found out that it's actually very hard and he just stopped doing it. But he did it just enough to actually damage the rocks. So Jason, that guy is actually looking for the person. I gave him your contact information. I'm sure that with all of your money in your bank account, it, it's not a problem for you to actually fix what you did, right? If the guy can prove that it's you, which he won't be able to, but I like to pile up some stress on top of your already shitty life. So the, the, that's the big sled thing. A sled that he then just put in his apartment and never used again. But that footage, of course, was never available to us. So he invested, I think, like 200 bucks for a sled and then used it once, realized it was tough and never did, and just stopped doing it. Never did it again. That's an athlete. That, that sounds like an athlete to you. Because, again, we have never seen him do anything athletic on his channel. A squat is not athletic. I'm sorry to say that. I love squats. It just doesn't count. Do something where you move your body. Show us how you move that blubber. Right? If it's actually something that helps you being athletic, we need to see. So that was the sled. The sled didn't work. But after the sled, there was another phase that he started. A, a phase that he could actually do inside his house this time. And that was when he started doing farmer walks. And these are responsible for one of the best piece of footage of the entire ment uh, galaxy of Jason Bloho. It's a footage where it's, you, you can clearly tell that it's taken from his very tiny apartment. And it's a camera that is pointing directly into a dark alleyway. And it's sort of like a, a whole movie film, in a sense. It's very creepy in its atmosphere. And then, from the darkness, you see some fat, white, pale creature just wobble its way towards the objective. And it's him like this, doing a farmer walk in his apartment. Like, what dweeb does farmer walks in their hole? Like, 
can't you go outside? Are you that afraid of people and the way they look at you that you can't just do it outside? And you can tell too that it's very cumbersome because when you turn around, it swings. So I, I surmise that he might as well also have damaged the apartment because that phase of the farmer works lasted like two weeks. And then people were like, well, why'd you give them up? Like you were barely getting started. And his excuse was that it was just a specialization phase, which what the fuck? This means absolutely nothing. What do you specialize for? Farmer's work? What do you think they carry over to? You're not a strong man. It's the thing with him too. He's not an athlete because every single time he picks something athletic to do, he selects that because it looks cool or because he thinks that it's going to make his followers think that he's athletic. And every single time he tends to copy strongman shit because he has a boner for Brian Shaw because they're both, I mean, bold, I guess he thinks that he's like him. So he's copying everything a strongman would do. But I don't know of a single strongman that would do farmer walks in their apartment in their breaches, not one. But at least we have the footage of that one. It's actually a great, uh, a great piece of evidence that is never going to go away because it's been saved multiple times. I do warn you, however, that at some point he bends over to pick up the thing and the objective sort of looks up his shorts. I've seen that video a year ago. I'm still scarred inside from it. So proceed with caution. So that was the farmer works. And I think he was carrying something pathetic, like 100 pounds per, per hand. It was literally baby weight. But he also stopped because at the end of the day, farmer's walks are actually quite tough, right? They're difficult. They're not as easy as just doing one rep max on squats. So that was the tell of his athletic prowess on his YouTube channel. That's pretty much all we have. Then we also have the great man of him doing front squats and then uh, trying to transition to Olympic weightlifting, which again, I would pay good money to have videos of him doing a snatch. Like, can you imagine that fat fuck as uncoordinated as he is, trying to do a snatch, which is one of the most technical movements. And he has no shoulder mobility too, so there's a high chance of him actually snapping his shit up. Oh, that would be choice. But of course, it never resurfaced. The one thing that happened, however, is that he just quit that LARP altogether at some point also. He just stopped doing snatches. But in one of his videos, you can see that there's a hole in the wall behind him. So what I think happened is he did a snatch and he fell backwards and the barbell bounced into the wall. Uh, because, again, even with one plate, he couldn't keep his balance, which is a given, of course. In terms of cardio, as I said, uh, his cardio was doing the weird pedaling thing when he was playing World of Warcraft, which simply does not count. But he liked to cite studies showing that HIT does not work. So again, for him, you could replace HIT by just pedaling weekly because it is good as long as you do it long enough. He's the type of person who goes to the gym, sets the, uh, what is the name of that, that machine of the devil, the, the treadmill on like one mile an hour and then slowly trots on it for 30 minutes and think that he burned a thousand calories and then they go home and they eat burgers because they always try to find the stuff that is the least difficult and also the least painful. And that didn't work. But he kept to it. He aggressively argued that it was the way to go and that a high carb diet plus low intensity cardio is the way, which led to him skyrocketing in weight. That's the period of time where he gained a massive amount of weight when he was still with Moon Cookie and he finally realized the errors of his way. Uh, anyone with two brain cells would have realized that way before they got to the point of actually being obese. But he's proven times and times again he doesn't have that ability. So that's all we have in terms of athletic stuff. So for now, his resume as an athlete isn't looking too good. But let's see if we can actually continue and find some semblance of sport career in his life. Because I actually dug back into his high school days and I didn't find anything relevant. His entire LARP about being a, a long distance runner, I couldn't find records of anyone called Jason Bloho actually entering races. I couldn't actually find anyone in the athletic circuits back in the days who would remember someone named like that. So he was either really, really terrible at it, or he just again lied. But I think he lied for one simple reason. And I think I'm just going to drop that man here because if I don't, I'm going to forget. I was again looking at his past and I was trying to figure out what he was actually, what he was actually doing with his life. And at some point, a very silly thought started crossing my head. A thought I couldn't quite 
I couldn't quite shoo it away. It was like recurrent. And uh, at some point, I needed to investigate because I, I had an, a hunch. At this point, I'm developing a sixth sense with anything related to Hemingway. Anything that I can sense is not correct. Every single time I dig, I find gold underneath. And so this time, I dug too. And what I found might be surprising to some, but if you think about it, it's going to make total sense. Jason Bloho, the 40-something-year-old man, does not know how to swim. He doesn't know how to swim. Can you, can you picture that in your head? I was actually swimming, and I was telling myself, man, how funny would it be if he couldn't swim? And then I told myself, man, that's a real possibility. I should investigate that. And I did. And I found evidence that he just cannot swim. And if you want to know how I figured it out, it was, again, detective work, the likes of Sherlock Holmes would be proud of. What I did is this. One, I looked at the piece of evidence I already had. One, the thing that struck me with this is knowing him and knowing the amount of time and energy he puts into his laps, every single time it's about soldiers. So you would think that he would try to lop as the most badass soldiers the USA has to offer, right? The SEALs. Every single time there's a fraud that is doing stolen valor, like Dan Bilzerian, they claim to be a SEAL because it's super cool. It's what a lot of people aspire to be because it's really tough to be a SEAL. SEAL training is no joke. And yet, Jason has never done it. You never found that strange that he went for the Green Beret or like mercenaries or whatever and never the SEALs. I think that the reason why is because he is so deeply ashamed of not knowing how to swim that he cannot bring himself to even, in his imagination, compare himself to a seal. And then I continued with that deduction. I remembered that we have footage and a story of him at a swimming pool party where he refused to go in the water. And what he said is that he had a gun on him and so he couldn't actually, you know, take his clothes off and go into the water. And I verified that this was true. But what if he actually took the gun with him as an excuse to not have to go in the water because he doesn't know how to swim. That makes total sense again, right? So I continued with that, then that investigation. And what I found is one, a post from the, uh, what is the name of that thing again? Bodybuilding from bodybuilding.com, a post from him on bodybuilding.com where he tells someone that he barely can swim. They're having back and forth and he says, oh, I, so the guy says, I like to do breast strokes for cardio, whatever. And Bloho says, oh, I, I stay away from that. I'm not that good at it. So yeah, the, the forum posts, the evidence from the swimming pool party, and the evidence from his stories, all of that corroborates. Now, I couldn't really get my hands on someone who would actually testify that he doesn't know how to swim. Because unless I actually contact his dad, which I don't really want to do, I don't want to bother his direct family because they already suffered enough, it's the best I can do, but I'm sure that I'm actually pointing out a truth here. The guy actually doesn't know how to swim. And if we think about it, wouldn't it be grand if he actually published something to try and disprove that? Because Jason, at the end of the day, if I'm lying right now, and if I'm t what I'm saying is bullshit, then you can just disprove me very quickly, right? I mean, you live again in a very good neighborhood. I'm sure that just like me, you have a swimming pool available that you can just go in and do a perfect stroke, right? Just do it. Prove me wrong. Prove that you know how to swim. That would be great. Plus, you could show off your occulent body. I think that actually the reason why he doesn't swim or doesn't like to swim isn't just that he doesn't know how to. He has a deeply rooted fear of being mistaken for a beluga whale and being harpooned by a Japanese boat, which is a very real fear to have. I mean, if I saw him in the water, like off the coast of Mexico, I would mistake him for a whale as well. So that might actually be a very legitimate reason as to why he refuses to get into the water. Plus, you can tell with his just incapability of being coordinated that if he actually swam anywhere near a lifeguard, they would toss a buoy at his face within a second, thinking he's actually, you know, drowning. It doesn't help, of course, that he's not allowed anywhere near swimming pools because there tends to be a lot of kids there. So, that's for the swimming thing. 
uh, the big the big reveal that I couldn't I still to this day cannot understand how it's possible but I think it's because he had such an unathletic childhood and he was obese from such a young age that he developed a lot of complexes with his body and so when anyone else was actually learning how to swim he just never did and since his life has just been shit and a continuation of just an endless amount of of losses his entire existence he never actually found the time. But could you imagine Bloho showing up to like a swimming pool class one of these days with a bunch of 10-year-old kids and asking the instructor how to swim, but at the same time saying that he's actually a seal and he, you know, he just, he had a traumatic brain injury and he forgot how to swim and his past life is top secret and he needs to regain his ability to like float on the water so that he can go back and save his brothers. That would be chapter two of the fake mook. I'm sure that he would actually spin something like this to feel better about himself. So, a guy who doesn't have the ability to do sleds, cannot do farmer walks, can barely walk, is out of breath when he talks to the camera, and cannot swim. For now, the picture is looking quite bleak. That is the athlete, that is the monster known as our boy Hemingway. May I remind you that he once claimed that he can kill with a kick, I've covered that in the past, and that he can unscrew a tire with his bare hands. And for those who don't know what this means, this means that in his head, because he had the ability to deadlift 500 pounds, he, it somehow carries over to being able to grip a screw so tightly that you can undo it with your bare hands. Something that he never shown, of course. The one time we have footage of him walking on a car, he was using a crick, you know, that thing that you use, and he was doing it the wrong way. So he was actually screwing the wrong way on the, the, the actual wheel and it wasn't going anywhere, of course. And at some point, he just brute forced his way through doing it, he, almost breaking the thing in the making. And he was very proud of himself, like, oh, I, I did it with my bare hands. And people in the comments were like, uh, you know that car mechanics do that every single day. And on top of that, you did it wrong. It's the reason why it was so tough. It, you did it the wrong way. And he deleted all of these comments, of course, because he can't face the truth. But he wants, uh, I, I remember, I don't know who he was threatening, but he was telling people that since he could deadlift a lot of weight, a lot of weight, he could also kill people with his bare hands. Again, because apparently pulling something from the floor carries over. Like, I think he's, he thinks he's the, the, the Incredible Hulk, that he can just grab someone and like tear their arm, their arm off or something. And yet, despite all of that, we've never seen him fight. So here is an athlete that we've never seen do anything athletic and a fighter that has never fought once in his life. Going back also, you can tell that he never fought when he was a kid either. He claimed that he did uh, and it, there's always a racial undertone when he laughs, always. So in his sub story about his youth, he tells the story of Mexican kids who would pick on him and he would beat the shit out of them. But that has never been verified and of course, in his head, when he's fighting his imaginary demons and enemies, it's always immigrants. It's, it's always brown people. That, I think, means a lot. It says a lot about his personality and who he actually is. But he does get upset when you actually tell him that. He's made multiple videos in the past about his compatibilities. I actually found some from his very, very first videos of his channel where he claimed to be a bouncer. He claimed to give Muay Thai uh, lessons. So actually Muay Thai lessons, you know, Muay Thai, the sport where you're supposed to kick and everything. He claimed to have been an instructor in this. He claimed to have given uh, weightlifting sessions to uh, Muay Thai champions. And he also claimed, if I'm not mistaken, recently that he had a pro wrestler client, that someone was paying him who was a pro wrestler. So let's go back on these claims. The very first claim, Bloho as a bouncer. Can you imagine if you show up with your boys to like the door of a club and blows the bouncer? Are you telling me that he's going to have the ability to prevent you from entering the premise? Like he has the energy and the charisma of a clam. He has zero muscle mass. He's here because he's 5'4". There's a stronger chance that you're going to show up to the door and you're going to mistake him for a garden gnome and you're just going to walk past him. Or like a weird gargoyle statue that the club has put there to scare people off, I don't know. But there is no way he would have the ability and authority to stop people from going in. And for people who are bouncers, maybe in the comments, you can 
you can actually vouch for me here. Usually bouncers tend to be physically impressive. That's sort of part of the course or the job. Or you need incredible martial arts skills. But usually just looking big and menacing is enough for people to not fuck with you. And they still try. When they're drunk, they still try. So imagine him trying to handle a bunch of rowdy, I don't know, like college teenagers or frat boys. Within 25 seconds, he's on his back like a turtle and they're squeezing his titties. I can guarantee you that. But in his imaginary world, he knows martial arts and therefore it's the reason why he was hired as a bouncer, even though he has never proven that. We've never have seen a video of him throwing a punch, just a single punch, just, you know, show, show us your guard and then throw a jab, you know, throw a hook, throw something. Just with one punch, you can tell if someone knows how to move the body and you, you can tell if someone knows how to throw a punch. Just ask him, hey, bro, close your fist as if you were going to punch someone. What do, you, what do you want to bet that he would close it like this? He's such an idiot. Of course he would. Or he would do something like this. He would never close it the proper way. Why? He never got into a fight. Yeah, he got punched one, the, 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 the fish hook accident that I already covered on the channel. But that, besides that, we have absolutely no proof. And for the claim of uh, actually coaching martial artists, that's never been verified. Uh, for the pro wrestler guy, I actually dug him up because you don't protect the anonymity of your clients. And the guy performed once at a high school. How is that a pro wrestler? Again, uh, that's a guy who showed up once with a mask in a ring and just f pretend fought for like a round. How does that constitute again a pro wrestler? He always is trying to up the status of his clients to make them look b uh, better. So a bunch of teenagers and some like 40 year old fucker who does high school wrestling turn into CEOs, pro wrestlers, pro athletes, and a bunch of, you know, dentists and lawyers. Funnily enough, I think I've said it in the past, it's interesting how every time his clients take the shape and the form of something he actually needs. Like a, di a dentist because he has shitty teeth, a lawyer because he's going to eventually lose everything he has or that he doesn't have the ability to sue people. All of that is very convenient. Athletes because it makes him look better. It's always the same with that guy. So that's the quote. I deadlift 600 pounds, which he didn't even deadlift back in the days. You think I can kill you with my bare hands? No, I don't think you can kill me with your bare hands. You can barely handle criticism and being called a fat fuck. You have meltdowns every single time. I make these videos about you and they are so potent that I have the ability to shut you down for like a full month. And I know that every single time I make these videos, you watch them and they kill your mood because you are nothing. You have the resilience of tofu. It's insane that you are still alive to this day, but I think it's not going to last for a very long time because with the radio silence that you provided us the past month, I'm getting a taste for that. I actually like when you shut your mouth. So I'm going to continue. I think the swimming thing pissed you off because I'm sure that I hit the bullseye on this. So every single time I'm going to dig up something new because, oh, and that's something I didn't say. This is why he was so upset. I even forgot to tell you guys. I told you in part 16 that what cr the, the, the backlash, quote unquote, of part 16 was that he was getting paranoid about people because he thought that people were catfishes. But more importantly, he was getting paranoid about what I had access to. So he went around and he wiped a ton of his messages. But some of which he wiped, I already saved. I already have copies and I took notes. So now I know it's him. And I think he went back and he realized what he did. And now he's just waiting anxiously for me to reveal what he knows I know. And it's not today, Jason. It's not today. Today, today we're just going to stick to the swimming thing. But, you know... One of those Wednesdays, when you least expect it, I'm going to drop the bomb and there's nothing you can do about it. So maybe, you know what, we're going to strike a deal because I'm, I'm very benevolent, as you can tell from my videos. If you just continue your good behavior that you've been doing for the past month and you don't compare yourself to Arnold Schwarzenegger or you don't attack anyone, I'm going to give you one more month of breathing room. And again, if you, if you behave one more month, etc., etc., just be a good boy. I know that you were uh, not re-raised properly at all, so I'm trying to actually educate you. Uh, usually with children who don't listen, punishments are more effective. So, 
that was for all of the the, the actual like mind-boggling power that he has in his hand that led to the fish hook story that, she, that is bullshit. And that makes me reminiscent of one event in the Met uh, universe, which was the Genova versus Rich slap. That was the point where Genova was trolling the heck out of Rich Piana and Rich stumbled upon him in an expo and he just slapboxed him into autistic heaven. And I think that Bloho is very afraid that that is going to happen to him. So that's why he just stopped showing up to expos. Because guys like Ohun or Cali Muscles would make quick work of him. As stupid and, and uh, primitive as these two guys are, in a fist fight, I'm putting all of my money on them. Like, Bloho would end up on the floor within two strikes. I want, like, can you imagine Cali Marcel versus Bloho? Like, these are two individuals who are just as stupid as one another, but with completely different styles. A, a fight would be very interesting, I think. I think that what we would see is one of two things. Either Cali goes, like, ape shit and Bloho just runs away, or he turtles and he just waits for it to be over. Or he just gets on his knees and worships the BBC in hope to be spared. It's one of the two outcomes. The best would be, of course, if Bloho would just drop the N-word and then Kali would tear him apart. That would be actually quite appreciated. But he would never have the balls to actually do it in real life. It's much easier to call black people the N-word on the internet than to do it to their face. So, that was for this chapter. So, can't move his body and for some reason, think that he can fight, but can't fight. Because he thinks that lifting equals fighting. That's something I see a ton with lifters. They think it carries over. It doesn't. If you've never fought, I don't care how strong you are. If you're put in a boxing ring, you're going to last 25 seconds. Uh, he has no experience in martial arts at all. And he always refuses fights. In a sense, he's very similar to uh, Vegan Gaines. Vegan Gaines is the same. He's threatening people left and right. But when times come to actually fight, he doesn't do shit. And that is because he's a weak pussy, just like Blow, where they don't know how to fight. Neither of them know how to fight. And within one or two punches, they would tap out. It's the reason why they don't show up. And they both ask for ridiculous conditions. Blow asks for like 100k. You, you never even made 100k in your entire life, Blow. So why exactly would someone pay you that much? I mean, I would love to see you getting destroyed by someone, but I'm not going to pay for that to happen. It's going to happen eventually. Karma always finds a way, and it might find a way sooner than you think. And uh, what's interesting in that, I find, is that it doesn't stop him for, from trying to connect his name and his presence to actually very capable fighters. Like, for example, Bugenhagen. If you don't remember, Bloho made several videos licking Bugenhagen's balls, like with the fervor of a golden retriever, to get him to notice him, which eventually actually worked, and he tried to create a connection. I know that there was no such thing. Bugenhagen took one look at the guy and was like, yeah, you're a better, fuck you. But he tried. And it's something that, you know, I might even say here, but I've always found it interesting that every single time he has problems with people, it tends to be either black people, you know, people of color, whatever you want to call them, and short men like him, but when he's in contact with taller, more muscular men, especially if they're very hairy, he has like a, a, a weird, like, subdued love for them. Like, you can tell he would love nothing more than to get a good cum shot to the face from Bugenhagen. Like, that would make his day, I think. And it, it worked with Bugenhagen, with Steve Shaw, it worked with uh, the, uh, the, the guy that I forgot, Big J, I think. Always bears. Bugenhagen is not much of a bear, but always bears. Which is why he never went for Alex, because Alex is not tall enough to be a bear, which is heartbreaking in a sense. But then you look at someone like uh, Stubes, who's not hairy enough and too feminine because he's in contact with his feminine side, and then you reject him. That's quite bigoted of you, Bloho. I know that you're very feminine inside, and that you wish for nothing more than a tough masculine man to actually fuck you up the ass. But, you know, give some guys a chance. Give them a shot. You could be shocked. Maybe those guys are your actual, you know soulmate, in a sense. That was a bit off topic. But to go back to the Bugenhagen thing, funnily enough, uh, when he's actually sucking up to someone, he is very, you know, subdued, as I said. He never claims anything crazy. I would have loved to see him claim that he was as strong as Bugenhagen. That would have been lovely. Of course, he never did, because I think he's actually afraid of him, in a sense. 
But Nether actually did that. I'm going to touch on that when I finally get back to the character stories about Nether. I know I pushed them aside, but Broho has been occupying all of my thoughts and energy with those videos because I find so much shit on the guy. These videos will never end, and I know that makes you very happy in a sense. So, as I said, Broho never said that because he thinks Rick likes him. He Bogenagon doesn't like you. I think he hates you because everyone that looks at you hates you. He has a friend, a friend who coaches Muay Thai, so that again was a LARP by Bloho. And he tried to LARP as a black belt. These were covered in the past, so I'm not going to just say that, say that again. But he's never been in a fight in his life. So much so that he even had to come up with stories uh, that are, you know, adding violence to his lore. Because I think his life has been so peaceful and just non-eventful that he had to invent stuff. So we had the fish hook story and we had the steel pipe story. A story where he claimed that at some point in his life, he got into a fight with his dad and the dad came up from behind and hit him on the head with a steel pipe. And the dad said, uh, I think something very corny, like old age and treachery will always beat youth. Always remember that. Straight from a fucking movie. Also, why do you fantasize about your dad beating your ass? That's very strange. A very strange thing to think is cool to say to people. Because it's one of two things. Either you made it up and you're a piece of shit because you're essentially saying that your dad beat you up with a steel pipe. Or he actually did. And in this case, well, uh, it's just abuse. In both cases, it just doesn't look as something cool that you should share with people. But... It would explain why he's so stupid. Because getting hit on the head with a steel pipe at a very young age would most likely divide your IQ by two. So that's a valid explanation. Then we have the incredibly cringy story of Wilton, where he claimed at some point that a family member of his that he doesn't cite uh, was dealing with a man of authority, aka like a general or commander in the army. And at some point he had a disagreement with the guy so he took a grenade and he put it underneath the toilet and he walked away. That's from a movie. I don't remember which one, but that's from a fucking movie. And uh, so that's a lie to start with. And two, why would you find that cool? So you blow up someone because you disagree with that decision. He shared that as if it was like a, a glorious tale of a, a, a warrior. But I personally don't see that. What he thinks is cool usually tends to be just pathetic. But that shows that even in his dreams and fantasies, he is not anything special. Because he's not an athlete. I uh, know, shocker, after all of these uh, minutes and minutes of him exposing him, of uh, me exposing him, we finally come to the conclusion that no, bro, you're not an athlete, you're not like Michael Phelps. You certainly don't need 10k calories a day. Because the difference between Michael Phelps and you is that one, he actually is good looking and tall. Two, he has hair on his scalp. Three, he knows how to swim. All of these calories go towards swimming. So maybe if you learn how to swim, you could eat 10k calories a day. But for now, you can't. So maybe actually take classes or even better, don't take classes. A man of your caliber, a badass as you, you don't even know how to learn how to swim. You don't even need to learn how to swim. Get on a boat and then jump in the middle of the ocean. You're just, you're going to, on appelle ça en français, apprendre sur le tas. You're going to learn. You're going to... Just trust me. Just do it. Tell the ball also to leave you there. Tell them that you, you're such a badass, you don't need any help. Just tell them to leave you there. Plus, you're going to finally meet your real family. Most likely, there's going to be a school of, of blue whales that are going to, to just swim by and they're going to adopt you as, as their own. You would finally be reconnected to your real family. The reason why I think your dad beat you on the head with a steel pipe is because you're not really his kid. I think he found you in the dumpster at Seawood and he just brought you home because his wife, for some reason, had some heartfelt feelings towards you, the abandoned baby whale, and you were raised as a human, so you never actually realized that you're not an actual mammal. Actually, whales are mammals, so you are, but not of the same type as us. I would tell you go back to Seawood, but they don't really employ whales anymore, so you won't really have anywhere to go. Just try to return to the sea and see what happens. And uh, keep us updated, of course. So that's for the felt things. And also, I think the reason why you can barely breathe, uh, Bloho, is because you're not supposed to breathe oxygen, you're supposed to breathe water. Uh, so you're not even a whale, actually, you're some sort of fish. 
Uh, so again, go go to the sea and take a big, a big, uh, what is the term? A, a big energetic gulp of water. It's going to fill up your lungs. You're finally going to be able to breathe properly and uh, become an actual athlete. You could become Aquaman. How great would that be? Bloho man. The man who spoke to fish. I would pay to see that movie. So, that was all the, the little well thing. I wrote something here. I can barely re read what I wrote here. Oh, he also said that he would do climbing rope. Again, I would pay to see that you would never be able to pull your fat ass up a rope. It's impossible. Impossible. So yeah, you're not a strength athlete because you don't compete, so that also doesn't work. I know that's a big cope that he would try to, to serve, even though he actually tried to be athletic with some of his endeavors and it failed, he would try and retreat on the fact that, well, he doesn't need, he doesn't need to compete on these lifts and therefore it's fine. Well, no, because you also don't compete on the strength lifts. So until you actually do a meet, you're absolutely nothing. You're non-existent. It's just an excuse to stuff your face. You're telling yourself that so that you can eat Twinkies all day. We both know that's what you eat. I know that the bullshit you show on camera is not your real... You're not, uh, you're not really eating that. It's not your real diet. Your real diet is all of the Twinkies that you stuff in your face when no one is watching and you cry yourself to sleep. You can't fool me. Look at the way your body looks. You have, you have a body of someone who has been eating Nutella forever. I'm certain that your mom put actual, like, directly maple syrup in your uh, les biberons, how do you say that? The, the uh, breastfeed, whatever you want to call it. Like those things that you give to babies so that they suckle on it. Yeah, that was pure sugar in yours. I, I'm sure you developed diabetes when you were eight. And that's not because you have a voracious appetite, but I already covered that. Although, have I, have I covered that? Maybe I haven't. Actually, there is a video of his where he's eating bananas, and it's a, it's a very painful video too, where he's staring directly into the camera and eating bananas. Uh, th there were two reasons for that. One, he was trying to prove people that he could eat a lot, and he had a voracious appetite, which bananas are not really filling, and they're full of sugar, so it's not really something that is very impressive to eat like six of them. It's disgusting. I mean, it's, why would you do that to yourself? But two, what people forget is that the reason why he did that is to attract the attention of a YouTuber called The Banana Girl. I think it's freely The Banana Girl, uh, which didn't work, of course, because she's like a pretty blonde girl and you're you. So that doesn't function. I don't know who told you that eating bananas while giving like seductive eye contact worked to seduce women, but I can tell you that it works much better on men. Maybe try it next time when you go out once a month Go into the bus, stare someone in the, the eyes and start deep floating a banana while giving them firm eye contact. You might get some action in that sense. That might actually be a winning strategy. The poor story I already shared, so the me of the past has forgotten that. And for the Yakitori video, I'm going to leave that for next time. Because next time we're going to talk, I think, about his diet. Or maybe we won't, I don't know, maybe I'll drop the video about his potential homosexuality. I'm feeling cheeky, I don't know if you can tell. So, you know, it's going to be a big surprise, Jason. We don't know what's coming, the future is full of surprises. All I can tell is this, for you, it's not going to be full of anything positive. Thank you for watching, have a good day.